What do you think the largest explosion in the universe is? The word that likely comes to mind is supernova. But did you know that there are multiple types of supernova? And some with even larger, more energetic explosions? There are two main types of supernova, each which can be classified further into subcategories. Even though it seems a little bit backwards, we're going to talk about type 2 supernova first. Stars, of course, have a life cycle. They are born, remain stable for millions, even trillions of years, until they run out of energy. As high mass stars age, they will start fusing larger and larger elements until it reaches iron, creating an onion-like appearance with the heaviest elements near the core. It only fuses iron because fusing elements larger requires energy instead of producing it. Once they run out of this energy to keep the star stable, there are many different ways a star can die, and their death is decided by their mass. One solar mass is the mass of our sun. If a star has less than eight solar masses, it will become a white dwarf, slowly dying until the end of time. So sad. If a star has between eight and 25 solar masses, its death will be a supernova, a type two supernova to be more exact. The star will begin to implode at about a quarter of the speed of light until Newton degeneracy pressure keeps it from collapsing. And boom! As much energy as our sun produces in its 10 billion year life is released in a matter of seconds. What's left is a neutron star. These supernova are fairly common. One happens in our galaxy every few hundred years or so. For stars with more than 25 solar masses, they can still die in a supernova death, but what remains will be a black hole. Type 1 supernova are quite different. They are not caused by the death of a very large star. What? Instead, they are caused by a white dwarf exploding. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a second. White dwarfs shouldn't explode. They just slowly die until the end of time, right? Yeah, unless they are part of a binary star system. Binary star systems are actually quite common in our galaxy. A rough estimate is that about one third of our star systems are actually multiple star systems, two or even more stars. When a white dwarf has a large companion star, it can start to siphon off some of its gases, stealing the star's sustenance. White dwarfs have a mass limit of 1.44 solar masses before the electron degeneracy pressure can't hold the star up anymore. So if a white dwarf steals too much mass, boom, you get a type 1a supernova. These supernova are super important for understanding the universe. They always release the exact same amount of energy, so we call them a standard candle. If it's close, we receive a ton of energy, and if it's far away, we receive much less. This helps us figure out how close the galaxies are to us. The universe is huge, and it's very difficult to understand if galaxies are far away or just really dim. These standard candles help us gauge the size of the universe. If you want to learn more about standard candles, click our video here or follow the link in the description. There are even larger supernova possible. A super supernova! No, I'm just joking. It would be cool if they were called that, but instead they're called a hypernova. Still pretty cool though. They're still a bit of a mystery, but they likely occur when two neutron stars collide, creating a huge burst of energy, known as a gamma ray burst. For stars with more than 100 solar masses, they can go supernova as well, but instead of leaving a black hole remnant, all of the energy is poured into the explosion. These types of explosions were what likely created all the denser elements on our Earth today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to press that like button, give us more ideas for videos, and of course, have a super duper delicious day.